Hey everybody, this is Ryder, and we're back to another recording of Hearthstone. Today is Wednesday, October 17th, and the Halloween event is happening. I need to play some mage cards, or I need to get really lucky and have somebody challenge a friend. So I guess what I could do is just send friend requests uh, to people I play randomly because this guy is not going to be free at any time. He's clearly, he's ranked 221 uh, legendary, so he's clearly high up there, and he's, he doesn't probably have time for likes of me. Meanwhile, I guess I'll play mage cards in ranked play. Uh, let's see, freeze mage here. Everybody I play, I'll send a friend request and try to do a challenge a friend and meanwhile we'll cover the rest of the news there's still a decent amount of news and I actually have to get all these pages closed before I can do work for the other series that I'm recording which is the end of the year watch list wish list steam wish list cleanup and I did all of the games that started with the letter A and it took about four hours yesterday and opened so many pages that that really needs to be something I focus on and fix. Let's see, I don't need this one and I kind of don't want to change anything else. The problem with this freeze mage challenge is this is the standard Archmage Antonidas strategy of getting as many of the Sorcerer's Apprentices on screen as possible and, uh, and then being able to do a one turn kill in which you uh, in which you go take the enemy from 30 down to 0. Unfortunately you have to basically wait till your 9th to 10th turn to play it uh, because everybody knows this trick and plays against it. So, all I'm really doing is slowing, trying to slow down the game uh, by freezing people, playing Ice Barrier, and playing other games, uh, other cards like that. We have a game on Steam called Killing Random Dudes Online. That is what we call a, well, what I call a low effort named game let's see it is actually multiplayer half the time you have games uh, like this and they aren't even multiplayer this is just like a asset flip of a flying around uh, demo of a game let's see 30% off for a dollar and 39 cents from a developer called Wackaki Games this is clearly a troll game and whether you have factory pirates kitchen simulator kitchen simulator all the games they've made are regular rated negatively um and you would think that steam would have a system to say hey wait a minute all these games that have gotten rated from 2017 uh were rated negatively maybe we should do a quality evaluation on this developer and see if he's if they're really oh, making anything wow. that that should be allowed on the Steam store, uh, because in all honesty, killing random dudes online should not be allowed on the Steam store, and it shouldn't have gotten as far enough to the point where I can see that it was listed. Even if this game does get taken down in a couple of days, why did it even get that far? Uh, all the games need to go through some kind of filtering before they're allowed on on Steam. Uh, the same thing happens on YouTube. I'm fairly certain that every single video that's uploaded to YouTube is at least in part looked at before it's allowed uh, allowed to be uh, online. Uh, it's at least looked to see if it's a duplicate video that's already been posted on YouTube. Uh, now if you're live streaming, uh, there's not much they can do with that. And, and in all honesty, you can only do a limited evaluation of a, of a video. Uh, 
uh, in, until and you have to heavily rely on people flagging it if it really is uh, offensive material. Of course, I guess I should be happy YouTube doesn't have some quality standards because whatever YouTube's idea of quality standards would turn would be probably would, would be ridiculous and and like randomly enforced. So I'm glad I guess they're not curating their content or otherwise my channel probably would be be one of the ones that got deleted. Do I want to play this and kill this or this? Okay. See now I should have, had I played this first, this would have been one mana. Which that may have proven to be useful. Instead of holding on to this this coin for no reason. Hmm. See, the best way I guess to pull this off would be to play this and have not drawn this or this or this. And have already collected the copies. Okay. Oh, seriously? Let's go ahead and do this first. We have a game on Steam called Echoes in White, which seems like it's a casual walking simulator uh, in VR. Like it probably is just a bunch of asset flips. Like they, they look fancy, certainly, but that doesn't really mean much. I guess it really will just come down to the price. We have to buy, pay, like, you have to agree to a third party EULA, which is weird. And it's 10% off for $7.19. No part of this seems like it actually is a game, though. I Let's wonder. see. Let's see. With magic, electronic, and world ethno music. Yep, it's nothing. Basically, it's all it is. It's nothing. Um, I this and if I play this now, I suspect he kills me. He kills it. Like, I don't think I can survive oh, this. Like, I have the full strategy of a one-turn kill here, and I still can't pull it off. I really can't. I just gotta hope this works. Do this. That didn't kill anything. Good. Do this. That didn't do anything. Okay. Do this. Do this. Um. 
two damage and freeze everything. Let's see. Might as well play a secret too. Um, let's start by doing this. So, my only hope is if he doesn't have a spell he can play, and he doesn't kill anything, any of these, I could play this next turn and maybe get a one turn kill. But no, he has a hero replacement that will do two damage to everything and just ruin it. Yeah. That sucks. See, I'm paying attention to this game and I'm still losing. This, this mage deck is not, not good. Uh, moving on, we have a game called Hands, H A N Z. Fight with crowds of enemies, repeal attacks. Uh, looks like it's a, it says it's a massive multiplayer game. It looks like it's a top down twin stick shooter. That's not very good. Uh, I would say this is probably an asset flip just for how drastic this scene and all the elements in this screenshot look compared to this. I That's wonder. pretty wide difference in animation uh, theme and style. Hmm. Let's see, it's an English and Russian game, which that's a red flag. It's 10% off for $4.49. Yep. I don't see anything here that makes me want to play Hands. And there was a game called Hands Puppet Game Guns they also made. Uh, nope, that one's not making it to the wish list. Runs out on me. Well, let's see, let's do this, I guess. And then do this. And then the turn and just lose. Maybe I should have played some more ma mage cards since that's what I was supposed to be doing. Uh, Gamma Sutra has an article Sega credits strong localizations for the jump in worldwide game sales. Quote No matter if a game is popular in Japan, it is unlikely to win over fans around the world if the localization is insufficient. Which. Okay, that's good because some of Sega's properties, I, I'm thinking particularly like the Sonic cartoons, probably not localized that good. Uh, but I think generally the games themselves uh, do get some decent localization. Um, of course, uh, like Yakuza 6 was censored in its localization and slightly criticized for it uh, for uh, but not really most people didn't even know what happened they they took out a very small section of a, of a man who was cross-dressing and and that I think was pretty much the the majority of the part that they they took out or slightly changed I don't even think they took it out. And Sega isn't notorious or about uh, censorship, so it's not not a big criticism to make, just a small one. I, I'm very happy to hear them say that they are going to focus and try to be uh, good at, at localization. Uh, I'd like to see all companies be relatively good at localization. Nintendo is kind of bad at it sometimes. Hmm. See, this is weird because I guess I, I'm supposed to just wait until the seventh turn to play this before I start playing something like this and this to draw cards. Kamatsu has an article, Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission has been announced for the Switch. This is a sort of weird looking game because Super Bo Dragon Ball Heroes, 
the characters are animated different from what you would expect from a Dragon Ball series. Um, let's see, there's an update here. Let's see, not much of an update. The game features more than 1,160 cards uh, from the card ass game, C A R D A S S game, uh, arcade games, Super Dragon Ball Heroes 1 to 8, as well as Super Dragon Ball Heroes Universe Mission 1 and 2, and approximately 350 characters included. So it's a very different game. Uh, apparently, it's it's not even an actual fighter game. It's being described as a super card battle adventure game uh, which is definitely an indicator of just how popular um, Dragon Ball is, is if anybody questioned questioned that oh man I could have used my fire blast we have a game on Steam called Tech TCK Boxing 3D it looks awful extremely low effort game like I'm, I'm really glad I got the web peak working assuming it is working uh, nobody's complaining on this on the uh, on the chat if it isn't just so it can show off some of these bad games and they want four dollars and 99 cents with no discount for this new game like, even if this game played perfectly which in no way does it look like it does uh, it looks so bad and of course it's the first game from this developer let's see we were trying to friend people by the way so I was gonna add some friend requests while we're sending things alright if I play this and I wonder I wouldn't be able to play this. Hmm. Guess I can play this and do this. And that's about all I can do. Game of Sutra has an article. Steam store pages now officially support animated GIFs. Uh, Valve has roll rolled out an update to Steam that allows devs to embed animated GIFs directly into the About section of the game store page. I guess that's the About section, not the screenshot section that is higher up. Must consider. Let's see. The, the company lightly details the specific of the change in a short announcement on their website, noting specifically devs will no longer have to sneak animated images in the store pages by disguising GIF files as PNG files. Dropping a few animated GIFs into the body of a game's description can give devs a quick and flashy way to showcase what their game real? looks at, or feel like on the fly and Valve notes that the announcement that animated GIFs seem to resonate well with Steam users as well. Uh, there aren't any hard limitations to the number of size of GIFs that uh, by the looks of the announcement, there aren't any hard limitations to the number of size or uh, number or size of GIFs that one store page can contain at once. Though overuse does risk significantly slowing down the game's page. While there doesn't seem to be any strict restrictions, Valve says it may remove animated images from any page it comes across with a load size that exceeds 15 megabytes, and 15 megabytes for a web page is actually rather generous uh, amount of space um, like I've been playing just for reference I've been playing a game that will only let you really make progress if you watch ads and I've set up an ad blocker on my own network so I'm playing it on my phone I have to disconnect from the Wi-Fi and connect to my my cell phone's network now uh, my cell phone data plan is the cheapest one could humanly use so it's only one gigabyte of data per month which has never really been a problem because uh, because I'm almost 100% of the time connected to my home Wi-Fi uh, 
So in comparison, I'm watching these ads that are YouTube videos that are 30 seconds each. You get maybe two or three before you've gone through a gigabyte of data. It's it's ridiculously Awaken a large amount of data to, to watch even a minute of of YouTube videos content. Okay. Now I've got to hope this works. I needed to freeze them. I needed to have played this. Oops. I screwed that up. I screwed uh, that up completely. Let's see. Techraptor has an article. Agony Lookalike Unholy gets a release window of late 2019. Um, as for this game, Unholy, I'm seeing a screenshot of somebody with a demonic metal mask. Demonic looking metal mask. I'm seeing a screenshot of a dark wooded like area, dark woods like area. Uh, let's see, what else am I seeing? Okay, here's a teaser video. Uh, a cradle rocking back and forth and reality going from a the real world into a demonic like HR not HR Giger style world I'd say it's more of a Lovecraftian style uh, of world people being burnt and people getting combined and merged into um, Into plants. Someday I'll be just like you. Very much like Agony, this looks this game unholy looks interesting. Uh, but very much like Agony, that's questionable. Like that doesn't mean much. Time runs out on me. Alright. Right, go ahead and kill this. Freeze this. Need to draw more cards next turn. Hmm. Let's see. The Steam page reads Engaging First Person Horror. Explore a rich story behind The Last City and see a Daw's desperate quest to save herself and her child. So I guess you're playing as a female this time. Immerse yourself in an ultimately dark environment never seen before. Multiple ways to approach challenges through stealth or through exploiting the social city social order. Take good care about your physical and mental health. Fight the encroaching madness or deal the consequences of going insane. Unholy was meant to be released in 2019. Uh, in 2020, according to Playway's website, however, the Steam page lists an updated window of 2019. So Tech Raptor really is referencing this as an agony-like game, uh, although to be fair, I mean that might not be a fair comparison here at all. Um, it, this may be its own game. This there's a chance that this one's good. Uh, no no guarantees certainly, but there's a chance. Oh man, I needed to freeze the enemies instead of kill them. 
Remember there is also a game called Scorn that is also in development and has been quiet for a while. Which there's no problem with a game developer being quiet. It's better that they be quiet and actually work on the game and instead of give a bunch of pointless updates. Alright, so we're now in a weird position. Uh, we got two of the tavern of the daily quest done and the other one is a challenge of friend and we're just never going to be able to find somebody to challenge while we stream so let's just move over to the Asian account let's see Asian account select and play Gamma Sutra has an article China's Hawaii that's H-U-A-W-E-I I mispronounced that I'm pretty sure thinks it can capture switch the switch marketplace with a thousand dollar phone uh, which to be fair like most phones are a thousand dollars or seven hundred dollars at least um, of course usually the ones that are that expensive also have a um, have some subsidiary where you're leasing it I guess I'm gonna play Paladin class cards and do dungeon battles after I do the tavern brawl and the uh, and the arena run. Um, but when you compare it to the Switch, which is only like three hundred dollars, that's no comparison in price at all. It's like the Switch is way cheaper. Of course. This is probably a video game console for the China market because Nintendos are limited or not allowed at all to be sold in China. Of course, right now, China is not approving any video games at all to be sold, so why would they approve a new console? So, there's a lot of problems here with this idea. The cell phone does not really look like a switch too much it has an analog stick and a d-pad on one side that seems like it's an attachment to the phone where the other the switch has uh, four buttons in the sh shape of a d-pad and an analog stick on both sides so you're talking uh, at least double the amount of inputs a lot I think the switches also have uh, motion control and uh, a left and right bump so yeah there's a lot of instances with like this where people make devices that that they I don't know if they think will be successful or they just make them for really no reason I think it could really just boil down to the fact that this game this phone may have been in development years before the Switch was announced, and it just took forever for it to come to market. Hmm. Let's see, destroy a minion. Restore its health to your hero. What does this do? Give a friendly minion plus one, plus one in life still. That was stupid. Gotcha. Uh, that was a bad move on my part. I should have thought things through a lot better. We have a game on Steam called Duke of Defense. Looks like it's an early access strategy game, but also it looks like it's not that great graphics. Looks like it's a tower defense game. Yeah, it's a tower defense game. And if there's one thing Steam does not need is a, another tower defense game. Early access for no reason. 20% off for $7.99 for no reason. Yep, that is not good. Let's see, what else? What else have they developed? Draw a stickman epic. That's pretty much it. Hmm. 
So yeah, that game's not making it to the wish list. We only have a few more games, but every time I say that, it turns out to be a little bit more than I would have thought. Let's see, whenever this minion takes damage, do one damage to all random minions. Okay, we have a game on Steam called Rascals. I've noticed I've started pausing more as I'm focusing on the game. Uh, I don't like it, but maybe that's just something I'm going to have to live with. Looks like this is a VR sort of asset flip game. Some kind of board game in VR where you can do some random things. It seems like it's a toy playing simulation, physics simulation, not not a thought out idea. Let's see, how much do they want for this? 20% off for $7.99. And, uh, yeah. No, I don't think so. This one is from a developer who really hasn't made anything else that looks interesting either. Credibility is not as much of a thing on Steam as I would like it to be. Uh, so many developers who haven't made any games before, and so many of them have made bad games and still still can make a few bucks by making yet another bad game. Uh, next game we have on Steam is called The Finnish Virtual Art Gallery, which... One would assume this is a VR experience of a Finnish art gallery. Uh, although to me it seems like this is possibly just stolen art and this is not licensed at all. Like you wouldn't have such a crazy skybox and in that image you're, you're not really seeing a lot of pictures here. This is not a giant museum. This is a collection of what seems to be barely a small handful of pictures. How much do they want for this? 15% uh, off for $4.24. Yeah, I would definitely have to question whether these art pieces have been licensed or not. Uh, let's come back here and play some Hearthstone. Yeah. Let's see. Gamatsu has an article Crueler Sigma for the Switch launches November 1st in Japan. Crueler is spelled C R O I X L. E U R Sigma S I G M A. Let's see what kind of it's an eShop game and it's a hack and slash game of some sort. There's no uh, there's no video but for the Switch version. But there is a Steam page for the Steam version, which is mostly positive. So let's see what this is. It looks pretty fast paced for a hack and slash game. Uh, they're selling it as 60 frames per second. That's nice. Uh, it's like a Warriors game, except for with an anime aesthetic. Let's see, is this tagged with any nudity or sexual content? I don't think so. So I think we're safe to click through some of these screenshots. It seems like you're just on this platform and you have different attacks. 
So this might be a game where I'd only play it for like 30 minutes. But that being said, I think I still want to put it on the wish list. Uh, it feels like something I'd like to I'd like to play for 30 minutes and experience. Uh, not all games need to be 100% finished, although generally speaking, almost every game I do play is 100% finished, or at least the story is complete. Uh, Crueler Sigma is the Sigma symbol. It is seven dollars and ninety nine cents. And when did this come out? Um, 2014. So it's a a kind of hidden gem. Mm. We have a game on Steam called Far Plane Relic, which looks like it's a early access action RPG, but it actually looks polished. I will say this UI looks a little uh, questionable, and this looks like it's from a cell phone uh, option, but this looks a little polished, and this looks okay. Uh, I kind of... I'm questioning if it's in English. It's English and simplified Chinese, so this might be a Chinese bad game, or it might be a Chinese good game. Um, I think it deserves a little bit more investigation. It's 15% off for $8.49. So I'll put this on the wish list, and we'll see if people review it. First game on Steam by this developer. Uh, as I was saying earlier, Steam... Uh, uh, the Chinese government is not approving any games for sale in uh, in China, so a lot of these Chinese developers, both good and bad, have all of a sudden had to put their games available worldwide, where previously they were not really interested in that. And in a weird way, this kind of has almost nothing to do with, like, the China trade war with the United States or any other thing it, it's it's really China in general just cracking down on video games claiming because they're trying to fight myopia which is just like eye, eye problems in kids uh, and it's questionable whether that is a believable the, the believable reason for it really um, and so, because China has not allowed the market to exist in, in China, the market now will go to other places. And I guess technically, if you're in China and you're VPNing outward to buy a game on Steam, uh, then you might be in violation of some law. But, but uh, I wouldn't particularly worry too much about it. As somebody who isn't Chinese, if I was Chinese, I might worry more about it. Uh, let's do this. Let's see. Big sharp pointy teeth. This is not an article about a video game, this is an article about a real world tabletop game, so I don't have to read that. Let's see. Plus three. We have a game on Steam called Lantern of Worlds, The First Quest. Looks like it's an RPG indie adventure. Looks like it's kind of an older looking game. Hey, as you can see, there's black bars on the sides and it's square for no reason. Maybe you would think maybe this was a cell phone game, but then everything is way too small to ever been a cell phone game. And everything is just too small to be a good game in general. Like, this old aesthetic of a fantasy world, a Tolkien-esque fantasy world, I'm not sure if it's super popular. I'm not sure if this is a good animation style either. 
or if this is very possibly could be just traced like I this looks like a familiar uh, squid or octopus so that that could just be 100% traced uh, same for a lot of these scenes uh, yeah it's just nothing here nothing there that looks interesting enough 10% off for three dollars and 59 cents maybe if this game was 60 cents and it hadn't been called the first quest because the idea of it being the first quest is that you're going to try and sell this in some kind of episodic development uh, process that I don't want to be a part of. Like if there's one thing Telltale's failure has taught me is I do not want to, to experience any more episodic games. And interestingly, this developer also has a game called Lantern of Worlds, not the first quest. And there's more DLC, and these all seem like they came out a year ago uh, to no interest at all. Like, nobody's reviewed any of these games, so... More evidence to that this game is not going to be... This is going to be one of those games that just is never going to have enough reviews to justify being relevant enough to being covered. Alright, well I can't show this next game, I think. It's an RPG Maker game uh, tagged with sexual content and nudity called Blood and Bikinis. And it is not widescreen. Uh, it is literally, I'm looking at... Uh, three guys, no, three girls and one guy in bikinis as the fighting characters as you walk around this RPG maker area. The characters, they get like blood on them. Uh, I guess when they touch, get damage. It seems like there's a lot of blood everywhere in the, in the overworld. I mean, if they really are taking the entire concept of uh, the skimpy, high fashion JRPG uh, girls uh, in, and just saying, hey, if we were to do, do this in a Western way, we just put all the characters in bikinis and, and, and not do the high fashion element of it. Yep. There, there actually really isn't anything offensive in the, uh, too offensive in the trailer, but I still won't bother to show it because clearly this is a pandering game at best. It's 20% off for $7.99 and it's being made by a developer who, who made a game called Badass, uh, which looks like it's a mixed review 51% positive of 27 reviews game that came out in 2017 that is another RPG maker uh, with nudity and sexual content elements in all honesty it, it just does not make any sense why you would mix RPG Maker and Nudity. Like, they are very drastically different games. Uh, or drastic concepts. Uh, when you get down to it, it's just a time thing, too. It's like, uh, what is the average duration of something on Pornhub? Probably, I would say, less than 11 minutes. Uh, probably maybe even a lot less than 11 minutes. What's the average duration of time you would play an RPG? Probably at least three hours, if not 200 hours. So you've got the two just completely different time ranges in there. Um, even the Leisure Suit Larry series ran into that same issue. It's just like uh, this Leisure Suit Larry as a game 
if it's if it really was a game designed to titillate, which it actually isn't, would be a horrible game because it takes forever, uh, and you really don't ever see anything in the Leisure Suit Larry games, anyways. Uh, But being a point-and-click adventure game, it certainly didn't speed anything out in, in that aspect. Uh, moving on, we have a game called Unleashed on Steam. Let's see. It looks like this probably isn't an RPG Maker game. It's just a Pencil! RPG this game. An old-school looking RPG game. Maybe there's a little bit of polish here. But anytime I see these overworlds that are just tile sets and boring looking, uh, I'm pretty much anti-sold on your product. I, I, uh, I mean, this really does have a lot of polish on this game, more than most, and I still don't want to play it. It's an English and French game, that's interesting. It's 15% off for $10.19. And it's the only game from this developer. That's still a better uh, deal, certainly, than than most RPG games, and I still don't want to play it. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, this one's a little weird because I've since learned that that the dad dating simulator dream dadly it, game is actually made by the gamer grumps so it opens a weird door to a youtuber potentially either having a slightly different bias against a game made by another youtuber um there there is a question certainly about maybe i should just not play games that involve other youtubers at all generally speaking you can get away with that because uh, most of the games that do involve other youtubers are bad dream daddy is weird because it was 100 percent the concept and design that seems by the youtuber and not a game that just hired the youtuber as a voice actor uh, but putting all that to the side this is news and so i do want to report on it as news. Uh, Commander has an article, Dream Daddy colon Dad Director's Cut coming to the PS4 uh, on October 30th. So it's it, the Dad Director's Cut as in Director's Cut uh, pun features content cut from the original PC release, new side quest, and the ability to replay mini games discovered throughout the game and a completely new minigame. Uh, let's see. You will get the Dad Director's Cut via an, a free update uh, on uh, on PC day and date with the PlayStation 4 release. Uh, Game Grumps has confirmed. I'm still not 100% certain that I would, like, with, I don't know if I'd ever even really have time or a good reason to, to play Dream Daddy. I do want to play it at some time. It, it looks like it would be fun to play for at least 30 minutes for a joke at, at the very least. I mean, it basically is a joke game. Um, it's also kind of weird that... Abby Hepburn from Giant Bomb, this company owned by CBS Interactive, was so obsessed about this game, and so many other mainstream video game media people were so obsessed with this game, as uh, made by a YouTuber. I wonder if they, they were, but then again, I guess Game Grumps probably is more of a closer to a mainstream YouTube content creator than they are a small independent, uh, independent YouTuber. So. They, they probably were friendly with each other but it, it potential cronyism could have certainly happened there and that's why you can have this it, game you can have uh, but when you get away from potential cronyism i'm looking at the steam chart it's 80 percent positive of 25 user reviews in the last 30 days and it's 88 percent positive 
of 2,638 reviews uh, over its lifetime. So, Dream Daddy, uh, a dad dating simulator that came out July 20th, 2017, is still very much a pretty well liked product. Hmm. What does this one do? Deal 2 damage to a minion. If it survives, it gets poison. Hmm. Can I do this? Let's see. This, this, and then this. Job done. Hmm. Next game we have on Steam is called Wonder Wickets. Which seems like it's some sort of mini golf game, although it's a top down, seems like way more action based game. Like, yeah, I really have no idea what this is. Seems kind of crazy. Uh, this doesn't look like an asset flip, it just looks like something that's hard to parse, hard to understand. like watching every bit of this this thing it seems like you create these these places and I wonder how much of the game you have to create yourself hmm so this is a weird game because it comes down to do I want to put this in my wish list and see if Maybe people can review it and tell me what kind of game it is later, or should I just reject it out loud, outright because it's just uh, incomprehensible. It's literally, I can't comprehend it. Um, Wonder Wickets is 25% off for $14.99. Let's see if there are any reviews. There's about four positive reviews on it. Uh, I think at such an incredibly high price I, I'm going to have to reject it. Uh, this developer hasn't made anything else. This publisher published a game called Skeleton Boomerang. They got 16 reviews. And Aliens Go Home, which got 29 reviews. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna not not wishlist that game, but just for as weird as it is. Like, I'm all for a weird game, but you gotta explain explain your weirdness. You gotta make me understand what I'm actually gonna be doing. Uh, Moving on, Gamatsu has an article, Omen of Sorrow Physical Edition has been delayed to November 20th in North America. I don't recall ever hearing about a game called Omen of Sorrow coming out in North America. Um, it was supposed to come out November 6th. Uh, it's probably a Japanese game. Let's see. You battle with 12 iconic characters and strategize 250 special moves, so it looks like it might be a fighting game yeah okay and it looks like it's coming out for the ps4 and that's it so that might explain why I it's only tagged with ps4 so I'm assuming that that's that's the issue I said a long time ago I had only a couple more games to to talk about, but I guess I was slightly wrong about that. Uh, I need to be better at estimating how many is a little. Uh, next game we have on Steam is the Jackbox Party Pack 5, which is already 91% positive or 12 user reviews. Uh, people like Jackbox. Uh, I was gifted one of the Jackbox Party Packs. Unfortunately, most of these games require you to play with multiple players, and I've just never really 
had enough people on a stream where it made sense to say, hey, let's stop playing Hearthstone and let's play the Jackbox Party Pack and let's and play with me so I can make a spotlight video on it and talk to the audience uh, while not talking to the people I'm playing with and criticize the game because that that certainly is going to be a weird experience too. I'd love to own all the Jackbox Party Pack games but it's really out of mostly a desire to support the Jackbox Games Company. Uh, now, if you are a more sociable person and you do have people come over and play party games, Jackbox Party Pack is probably great for you. I did briefly consider in November as I was doing the never going to play it or never going to finish it November uh, concept, I did briefly think about uh, about doing some of the old you don't know Jack games and, and just saying look I'm never going to finish this game I'm never going to play it uh, but I don't know. I might actually come back and try and uh, try and play them later on. So, I, so I wasn't w willing to commit to that. Whereas most of the games that I did cover, I was totally willing to commit to saying, "Yeah, I'm never gonna play this. No way. Not in a million years." Okay. So this would be nine. Oh, I lose it twice though. Well, that sucked. Job done. Next, we have a game on Steam called Flank That Tank, which is MS Paint graphics. Immediately, I realized that I don't want to play this game, and it's five dollars and ninety-nine cents. Again, an extremely low-effort game. Uh, what I think Steam often calls a troll game, but it's very possibly it's the wrong term, like, frankly, because troll just means something different in people's minds. Uh, like, whereas very low effort games might be insulting, also, for a different reason, it, I think it's more descriptive. Let's stash that away. Hmm. Let's see, this one is weird. We have RimWorld on available on Steam. Oh, how can this game be available and coming out October 17th? I guess it was early access up until this point. And now it's at a full release. It's overwhelmingly positive. Although, frankly, I'm not sure I'd ever want to play this. This is one of those games where I'm going to have to just bow to popularity and say you know what this this needs to go on the wish list I need to consider playing this even though it's probably not a game for me um, so yeah this one's got to go on the wish list I'll give a friendly minion poison Calm down, I'm a doctor. Hmm. oh that was a combo Okay. This is a TechRaptor article talking about a game that is not available yet, so I don't need a need to talk about this article. Let's see. Let's go ahead and play this. And kill these people. Bye. 
Like I need to make sure this guy doesn't die, so I need to do something and I screwed up. Everyone panic! There you go. Uh, Gamath has an article, Hitman 2 ex elusive target has been portrayed by Sean Bean in the announcer. He he's portraying, at least in the ad, a former MI5 agent turned freelance assassin, Mark Faba, F-A-B-A. Hmm. So, Hitman 2 seems to be doing as well as Hitman 1. Uh, it kind of gets a little weird about whether you really need to buy Hitman 1 or what buying Hitman 1 would really feel like or entail to play that game. Uh, it probably would be fine, would, would be my guess, but th there are some definite questions there. Alright, this, this. I could have killed that. Hmm. I think I really can't do anything here. Hmm. hmm. We have a game on Steam called Immortal Darkness Curse of the Pale King. It's just tagged as an RPG. Uh, you have a slightly better polish here on the the interfaces. Seems like it's a hack and slash top down game with a little bit of uh, puzzling and platforming and I'm not sure if this really is a great game or if they're just showing the parts that are really good and there aren't that much in between. You can see that down here you've got an interface that indicates special abilities or items. Uh, games like this where you have a whole skill bar are probably a little too much for me. Hmm. Suffering a little bit from dark screenshot syndrome. How much do they want for this game? $19.99? I think this game deserves a little bit more investigation. First game from this developer, so I'll put this on the wish list and we'll just see see if anybody plays it and if anybody likes it. Over here somebody gave up and because they gave up I I won, which is good. Let's see what else are we trying to do? We, we're going to need to play Paladin cards or defeat the dungeon run bosses after the arena run, which we're already an hour in, so we need to hop into the arena run very fast. I imagine all of those cards were in duplicates. see 150 yeah I have 11 cards that need to be dusted I don't know why that is the case I think bugs are happening if I was to guess uh, disenchant that I only have 740 dust here uh, which if a new expansion comes out yeah then that will be a slight issue of concern let's see we've got a golden and a regular um, so if there's a golden and a regular and I'm on my Asian account I guess I just keep them even though that's extra I'm probably gonna have to make some new decisions pretty quickly on that too some good cards but I'm pretty sure I had a lot of those good cards and then clearly still some bugginess about just marking things off as being seen like we just looked at all of these and the right clicking sort of helps it sort of doesn't yeah. 
Like it took four different times to go through the list to just mark them off as red this time. And by the time I by the time tomorrow happens, it could they could all be marked as new again. Alright, what else do we need to do? Paladin class cards while doing the arena run is our hope. Arena entry for free. Okay. We want to play as a paladin. Let's see, Gina. She's dressed up as a witch. And he is dressed up as Frankenstein. Which do I want? I guess I'll take Mage and Paladin, I guess. And we want to play a bunch of Paladin cards. I think that's what I wanted to do. Uh, this one? I'm gonna only have like really high level spells now. Let's see. This one. And. Let's see. This one. And this one. Hmm. If I take this, I probably won't get any more Murlocs. So I'll take this one. Hmm. Take this one. Hmm. Probably could take this and be fine. Take this. I only wanted really high level spells, but I also want to play Paladin cards. So now I'm in this weird position. Give a minion plus two, plus two, and taunt. Hmm. Six. And this. And this. And that one. Hmm. Take that. Take that. Take that again. Take that one. All over the board again. This is ridiculous. Take that. Oh, I guess take this one. See, I'm looking just for really, really good uh, magic spells, and I don't have any. It's not offering any to me. This is a weapon, not a spell. But I'll take it anyways. Take this. Take this, I guess. Take this, I guess. Yeah, so my whole strategy failed immediately in just building the deck. Yeah, okay. Moving on. Hmm. Here's an article that's just talking about a game that's not out yet, so we don't need to talk about that article. You asked for uh, Tech Raptor oh, has an article. Overwatch's Pink Mercy skin funded three critical programs. 
Uh, the Pink Mercy Charity Skin in Overwatch has funded three critical programs via the Breast Cancer Research Foundation, according to a tweet from the official's Twitter. Uh, so, let's see. This is kind of weird. Uh, the Breast Cancer Research Foundation is features a three-star rating on Charity Navigator, so that's questionable. It's like, how out of how many stars? Out of four stars. Okay, that's good to know. And an A-plus rating on Charity Watch. Uh, let's see. The three programs that apparently the you, the money went to, one was the Precision Prevention Initiative, which is a series of programs aimed at stopping breast cancer before it becomes a problem in the first place. A think tank of researchers specialized in breast cancer, uh, specializing in breast cancer will convene to design a request for proposals, a framework to solicit grant applications from researchers who can meet strict criteria. So the money went to a think tank to waste the money in basically doing uh, basically nothing. <laughs> okay, the, this is why you always have to investigate where the money is really going is because, yeah, I, that's not going to, the, the process is set to end March 2019 and awards for research funding will be distributed in the following three years, so at best it's it's money going to researchers. Uh, not even, I think, particularly guaranteed to... Uh, I guess they're looking for ways to prevent breast cancer from happening, which is probably a, a close to impossible uh, thing. The next one is the Translational Breast Cancer Research Consortium Award which is a mechanism that will contribute to launching five new clinical trials this year. As anyone who's dealt with a tough disease knows, clinical trials have a potential for promising results. Unfortunately, they're also pretty expensive to conduct, and that's where the award comes in. A consortium of 19 medical institutions and almost 200 investigators will be conducting these trials under multidisciplinary approach towards testing new therapeutic strategies. So, therapeutic strategies, um, uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding that word, but that doesn't sound like it's actually uh, attempts to cure breast cancer as much as to alleviate it, but maybe I'm misunderstanding the word. Finally, the last part, the last program is, uh, is the BCRF annual research grants. Into this, uh, a total of 25 grants have been funded by Overwatch fans. These Blizzard Entertainment Awards will be distributed to 29 researchers across 10 U.S. states and eight countries on six different continents. So, yeah. Let's see. So, you bought the Pink Mercy skin on Overwatch, theoretically, and then Activision Blizzard got attacked right off because of it, and uh, and that hmm. and and all the money that you got for buying that skin basically went to research grants which it's up to you whether you think the research is valid or not or whether it has a chance of finding something or not um, personally I would have liked if I was really concerned about breast cancer I would have liked to find some individuals that actually or had breast cancer and needed help uh, funding or or in some other ways uh, getting treatment like people actually have breast cancer now not not 
researchers whose research may find nothing because almost every research paper ends with the phrase more research is needed basically um, so um, I don't know if this is gonna lead to any new drugs or or solutions uh, like I don't think that there will be a cancer vaccine in my lifetime for any kind of cancer if there is that'd be great but it's not likely and honestly to be a little cruel it's it's kind of a it would be a problem if people stopped having cancer because there's already too many people on the planet if people lived longer the resources would be even more uh, limited generally speaking though I, I just prefer a more local approach a more hands-on approach if I'm gonna give to charity uh, if you wanted to donate to this come the the charity BCRF you could have gone to their website and gotten a tax deductible donation instead of buying the skin which is not tax deductible by the end user But moving on, Blood the, that's thunder. just stuff to keep in mind. Uh, Game of Sutra has an article, GTA 5 cheaters assets frozen following a Australian court ruling. Uh, I'm trying to... Uh, this is seizure orders against players believed to have been connected to the cheating software known as Infamous. The infamous cheat allowed players to access restricted features in GTA 5, including manipulating the game's environment and virtual currency for their own benefit and generating virtual currency for themselves and other players. Um, see if they actually name who whose assets are frozen. Yeah, there's several names here, but none of them look like they're YouTubers or celebrities in any way, so I kind of don't feel need to to mention their Udan. names. Your soul hmm. shall be mine. So that's a interesting continuation of Rockstar Games and other video game companies suing and, and getting judgments against people who are cheaters. Cheating apparently has become a lot less acceptable than it used to be in the old days when it was just plug in this game genie and you you affect your own experience you don't affect anybody else and inherently I guess where all the cheating comes down to though is microtransactions every company that sues somebody for cheating is also a game that is, is also a company that is selling microtransactions like crazy uh, so one would not have to fight against the cheater so much if your game was not overridden with with terrible monetization elements and in all honesty if i was going to cheat on any game it would be a game with microtransactions something that was designed to be unfair and boring and grindy and designed to push you into purchasing uh, XP boost. Assassin's Creed Odyssey being a great example of that. It's like, it doesn't sound like it's a great game unless you buy that XP boost, uh, from what I'm hearing. So, it really comes down to the thought maybe people should just make good games and get a, get the microtransactions out of them and, and then nobody will want to cheat. I really don't run into instances of single player games without microtransactions that I need to cheat on or want to cheat on. And even if, if they were difficult enough that I needed to cheat on them, most of them have some kind of built-in system that, that the developer has added, it, whether it's just selecting an easier difficulty mode or doing something else different. I don't have enough mana. Attack that. Today was probably one of the worst days to to have to do all this extra work. Uh, 
burning out my voice even more. Okay, next game we have on Steam is called Majesty Moonbee Beta. It says it's a massive multiplayer. Looks like to me it's probably a low polygon asset flip game. Uh, where you're playing as what it looks like wizards and witches on just asset flipped environments. Yeah, there's really nothing here. There's literally nothing here that would make you want to play this. Uh, this must be some kind of Spanish speaking developer because you notice it's English, Portuguese, Brazil, Spanish, Spain, Portuguese, Brazil, Portuguese again, French, and Simplify Chinese. Uh, early access, 10% off for $6.29. No. No way that I w would pay even 60 cents for a game like that. Let's see. I want to do the battle just Repent. keep attacking I guess and reporting for duty I don't know what I'm really supposed to be doing runs out on me Let's see, we have a game on Steam called Yomatsu. It looks like it's probably some less than the best animation style. It says it's RPG, nudity, adventure strategy, or free to play. Well, if it's nudity, I need to look at it, so come back over here on this screen. And what is it? It's an RPG maker game. Looks like it's probably the newer version of RPG maker. But that really doesn't change much. Hmm. Yeah, low effort game. Hmm. Let's see, 15% off for a dollar and 69 cents. At least they know this isn't isn't worth a lot of money. It's from a developer who's made two other games that haven't been reviewed at all. Gotten any reviews? Let's see. Roll the cards, discard, and the spells gone. Hmm. The battle. Hmm. Let's see. Next game we have on Steam is called Translation, which looks like it's an asteroids game with just a lot of flashiness and ADD flashing like potential seizure alert uh, flying around I really hate games like this that they I think people actually think this is appealing to have a screen that is just full of bright lights and neon colors and like no you're really missing the point there Let's see, early access, 15% off for $12.74. Really just joking. Let's see, deal one damage to all other characters. Job done. Let's see how this works. game we have on the Steam is called Zoological Era, which seems to be a badly made RPG of animal? Anthropomorphic animals? Like, as much as I hate people that use RPG Maker, looking at this I think the person should have used RPG Maker. This is, this is kind of ridiculous. And in a weird way, the anthropomorphic characters, they don't look terribly drawn. It's 
but clearly as far as making a video game out of it you're, you're lacking in experience and and skill it's 99 cents this game is Let's see what else nope this developer hasn't made anything else either all right so this one's gonna do one damage to everybody so if I do This. If I do this, if I do this, reporting for duty. Where if I do that, The Australian Classification Board has a Final Fantasy 15 multiplayer comrades as a single player being listed, which is bringing about some speculation that possibly the Final Fantasy 15 multiplayer will be broken out and sold as a separate game. Final Fantasy 15 is, uh, from all I can get, not a good game. Hey, we got a victory. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I don't think Final Fantasy XV is the Final Fantasy I would play. And probably by the time I get around to playing Final Fantasy game, sixteen will be out. Gamma Sutra has an article. The Chinese firm GAEA picks up a 20% stake in Dead by Daylight developer behavior. Jane um, versus... Undoing. Let's see. Shall bring victory. You asked for it. The problem here is that Dead by Daylight was kind of a failure, and that developer is probably on the cusp of running out of money, and that's why they sold one fifth of their company there. Uh, the behaviors also developed the game Fallout Shelter, which I think Activision Bethesda, uh, not Activision Bethesda, but Zenimax Bethesda, have have confirmed that they, they really probably wouldn't hire a third party to make another game, probably including a Fallout Shelter 2. Uh, they made a game called Westworld, which I assume is a tie-in to the HBO movie. They made the Assassin's Creed Rebellion game, which I don't think is reviewed that well. And they were in development for Games of, Game of Thrones game uh, through an existing partnership with GAEA. So they ran out of money. They can't finish the, the Game of Thrones game. They sold 20% of their company to finish the game. And it's probably slightly unfair to say it's all behavior's fault and behavior's a bad guy in the story because it often is the case that publishers will sign a, agreements with companies asking for way too much knowing that they're gonna fail and then saying okay you you can't do what you agreed to do even though we we knew you'd never be able to do what we were asking uh, so now sell us, give us some of your company, which then I imagine they will either use to do a hostile takeover or to just sell, sell <laughs> off the company and make some profit that way, which it's another bit of shadiness about owning stocks and corporations and businesses. And I generally think it's, it's just this all shell game of, of shenanigans, uh, that shouldn't be allowed to be done. Well, I managed to end up one short there. Uh, we've got a game on Steam called Second Second, which says it's an early access strategy card game. Hmm. There's far too many card games coming out. These cards looking at them don't look very good the animation on top looks all right but not great uh, this may not be a collectible card game as much as a deck building game either way the animation seems a little low and does not really compete 
compared to something like Hearthstone or uh, Artifact or uh, the Lord of the Rings card game that's in development. This is an English Korean game. Early access for 10% off for $14.39. So this again is a, a game to pass on. I kind of like the thumbnail, but the thumbnail seems to have very little connection to the actual game. Hmm. I have one more tab. Gamma Sutra has a job, uh, an article, get a job. Airship Syndicate is hiring a senior programmer. If you want to work in Austin, Texas, they are looking for an experienced gameplay programmer to build a cool new action game for PC and consoles. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard of Airship Syndicate, but I honestly guess that doesn't really matter much these days either. Um, because you just have to do a little bit more research to decide is this um, a brand new company or is this a company that has a bunch of people who work for a bunch of other companies since turnover is so high in the video game industry. Now I'm on the Humble Bundle. The Humble Discovery Pack is still here and still $10. Unfortunately, right now the Legos are on sale too, so I'm gonna blow my budget for next year on Legos if more than anything. Uh, real world Legos, not the video games. But if somebody was to buy the Discovery Bundle and gift me War for the Overworld, Ruby, Phantom, Brave, PC, uh, those are the three of the six games that I'm seeing that really interest me. Uh, that would be a great way to support me. You can send that through your Twitter DMs, the Steam codes. And that is done now. So I can just kind of focus and finish this part of the game. And then I think we're done for the day. Rainbow Studios, makers of MX vs. ATV and Monster Jam game, followed me on Twitter. Okay, I don't think I've covered anything by, by Rainbow Studios, but okay, maybe I have. So, let's see. Must consider. There's... There's a new game we could talk about on Friday. There's a new game we can talk about on Friday. There's a new game. We started late today and still games are coming out. Hmm. Let's see. Now that I'm just focusing on playing Hearthstone for the most part, this will work a little bit faster. See if I heal this. I think that will work. Let's do this. The red one tastes like cherry. Job done. So I'm scrolling down my Twitter feed and just seeing if there's anything new in the news to talk about. I doubt that there really is. lot of horror games but honestly I think we've probably gotten too close to the Halloween point um, where because of that it, it stops making so much sense to, to to try and catch a random audience of people who might like I'm ready uh, might like or want to play just random. Alright, so do I want to do this and kill this guy or do I want to do this first and do three more damage? Oh, fox 
Just thinking of this. There we go. Let's see, Valve publishes loot box odds for loot box odds for um, uh, Dota 2. Chances of receiving a rare item from a bundle now disclosed in game with escalating odds calculated. It seems like the odds are not consistent, and so the the longer you've been trying, the more likely you are to. Shame I can't play I'm more. Gamma Sutra has another goal. Rockstar or debacle prompts devs to spotlight their crunch free games. Uh, I think the, they're showing a picture of Devolver Digital's published game Minute. Uh, oh, by the way, did I mention that even though YouTube never really fixed the fact that when I'm tweeting out video games uh, on Twitter, then they're not showing a thumbnail anymore? Uh, Somebody liked liked that too. Interesting. Um, the even though they never really fixed it, they sent me a a automated message saying, "Hey, would you like to review your experience?" And I'm like, "You haven't even fixed it yet." If I the only review I could give right now is you suck, you do because you literally not fixed the problem. You just handed it off to somebody else, and that was the end of that. Uh, meanwhile, on bigger stage for YouTube, if you're watching YouTube on desktop now, you have a mini player option where you can continue to browse at least YouTube, if not the rest of the internet, uh, and still have a video playing in the corner, uh, much like you, like they added to uh, YouTube, the YouTube app where you can do uh, picture over picture. Picture in picture type features. I'm not sure that you really would use that system very often on a desktop, but maybe. Depends depends on if you have a cell phone or not. Because if you, I would guess if you did have a cell phone, uh, that changes your experience quite a bit. Access denied. I'm ready. Let's do this. And I'm scrolling down my Twitter feed and I think I've seen everything. Five hours ago, Dead Space 2 episode 13 aired on my channel. So I'm probably at a point where I'm gonna have to scroll down my Twitter feed to a point where it refreshes to to see some new content, but it is also very possible that there is no c new content. Twitter is so weird. So, so weird. I am thinking about, and I'd like some feedback on this, does a YouTuber really need Instagram? Like, because I probably couldn't perform an Instagram feed. I don't know if there's really a reason to, though, as a YouTuber. I, how, I'm not sure how any of that would work. Hmm. And see, I'm out of news now, so basically, after this game, there I'm really just playing Hearthstone to finish the arena run and hopefully get one. Uh, one more daily quest done. Uh, in fact, I probably will just fall to doing it off screen if uh, 
Here's an article I missed. Te Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Premium Currency Hidden at Launch. Interesting. Let's see, I've only played four Paladin cards. Uh, and that, that was the one thing I was hoping would I would have accomplished. It's playing Paladin cards. Well, I guess we could cover the games that I just opened. And we don't really need to save them for Friday. Yeah, nobody's going to be watching on Friday anyways is, is typically what happens. Jaina versus Malfurion. I must protect the wild. Hmm. You asked for it. Let's see. Play that. That's and get rid of those two. At a certain point, it might just be more time efficient to just concede. But I'd like to try to take it as far as I can go. I'm not the typical... Typically, I don't like to just give up without even trying. focus on playing too. Yeah. I'm streaming down Twitter and Scrolling down for Pay attention, class. It really needs like a Xbox, not like an Xbox console, but just a close this tweet or archive this tweet feature. Like, because my use of Twitter really is like a, I guess, a. Um, it, it's like a email inbox and I'm trying to be at inbox zero at all times so if I could say hey I've already seen this this thing close it uh, close it after I've scrolled over it or so like don't see it again of course that would eventually end up with entire feeds that are just empty Converting stored energy. Let's do this. And this. And I'm at the bottom. So I've gone through my entire Twitter feed, so let's just cover these games while we're playing. Uh we have a game on Steam called Bliss Maze, which looks like it's a Chinese MMO of some sort. Uh, or could be just any kind of low effort game. Let's see, yeah. English, Japanese, simplified Chinese. Half of these screenshots are not wanting to load. Hmm. Yeah doesn't look good it definitely does not look good how much do they want for it 15% off for five dollars and nine cents yep no thank you let's do this I'm drop dead cold this 
We have a game on Steam called Tap Sonic Bold, which is what? It seems like it's probably some kind of music game. Uh, possibly a port of a cell phone game, considering it has tap in the name. Hmm. Well, I would never play a music game. Let's see, early access, $19.99. Can I illuminate it anymore and see if this developer has made anything else? Well, they made Tapsonic World Championship VR. Yep, but I am not interested in Tapsonic Bold. It does occur to me that while I'm looking at games on Steam, people are not really able to see what's going on on Hearthstone. But haven't gotten any feedback to say we really hate that. Um, theoretically, yes, you could still be watching in the bottom section, but that's not going to show a lot of detail. Maybe the whole web peak idea is dumb, and maybe I should just go back to talking, talking and reading the name of the the games and everything out loud. And also, the web peak changes the experience for people who just want to mute me and watch watch me play Hearthstone. But honestly, that was never an audience that I was going to satisfy. Anyway, if, if you're not here to listen to me talk, then you're really not consuming my content that much, are you? Uh, let's see. We have a game on Steam called Wingia. W-E-N-J-I-A. It says it's a great soundtrack. It looks like it's probably a Chinese game, but it might be good. Like this seems to have some polish to it. Seems to be a platformer where you're playing as a cat, as a you're running, double jumping. It, I've seen a lot worse uh, platforming games what like to that. Do. What to do? Let's see how much is it. Ten percent off for eight dollars and nine cents. I think this game deserves. A little bit more in the investigation, so I'll put this one on the wish list. To come over here and play. We have a game on Steam called The Ninth Gate, which says it's a gore action adventure horror game looks like it might be a top-down game uh, no it's not a top-down game it's just a horror wandering around the uh, wandering around and investigating things with a flashlight uh, suffering from dark screenshot syndrome I might be able to argue that there might be slightly more polish in this than your standard horror experience until I saw this doll that seems pretty bad looking hmm. like honestly I don't think I could play these horror games even if they were good but this doll is, is part of the problem like this doll shows up all over the place and that's supposed to be your main horror character and it's just not animated well hmm. so yeah this is a english simplified chinese traditional chinese 15 percent off for five dollars it's just not not good enough quality only game from this developer so over here i lost no surprise there uh, we have done three uh, we've done three tavern brawls for this event and in one of them we got one victory so we are running a nine to 
one loss ratio. That's pretty pathetic and pretty typical for a tavern ball experience. Particularly for me, who hasn't done a tavern ball game in a very long time. Sorry, I got distracted. Let's open these card packs. There we go. So these probably all are gonna be cards that get dusted. Let's see. Uh, four out of five. One of them is new. This was the new card in Epic, okay. Not too bad. And we are here at this point where, uh, where I need to play Paladin cards or get dungeon boss runs done off screen. Maybe I'll just do dungeon boss runs. Uh, just and save this for Friday. Also, I need to challenge a friend on the European account. Uh, over here on Steam, there's a game called Kingdom Rush Origins, which is a tower defense game, so I'm not gonna put it on the wish list for $14.99. So, let's close that one. Um, and I think that probably leaves me in a good position because there are no more games to look at. There's just a couple stories that we might cover on Friday. Uh, okay, so that's going to be it for this stream. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want to friend or follow me on any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below in the description box. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.